for this video, I survived 100 days in super ultra hardcore Minecraft. So that means five things. Just like regular hardcore, every enemy and every boss is at the hardest difficulty possible, and if we die, the entire world gets deleted. And now the third thing is that there's no natural regen, so any damage is permanent, and the only way to heal is with a golden apple, or a healing potion, or something like that. And the fourth thing is that we're never allowed to sleep, so we have to stay up and deal with the enemies. And the fifth and final thing is pretty lame, but it's just that we'll be playing with shaders, which in my opinion definitely adds to the difficulty. But that's not all. We're also going to be pushing this challenge to its limits, and do so much more than just defeating the ender dragon or getting netherite gear. I mean this when I say it. I haven't seen anyone else do what we're about to do. So let's see. How much can you really get done on super ultra hardcore minecraft in a hundred days? It all starts here on day zero. So I began by getting all the logs and cobblestone we were going to need for our starter tools and while digging down for the stone I actually found some coal which was really nice because now all we needed is the food to cook up. And speaking of food, I collected something that was pretty important, and that's the Oxide Daisy. Because if you combine this with the two mushrooms and a bowl, you could actually get a suspicious stew of regeneration, which will heal one and a half hearts, and for our early days, that's going to be super important. And after collecting everything I could at spawn, we set on, on a little adventure, where we found a village without really too much in it. But there was an iron golem, so I took that guy out for some extra iron, and while doing that, I noticed a shipwreck. So we took out the iron golem, then headed over to the shipwreck, and collected its goodies. And from all the chests, we got a suspicious stew, two potatoes, some emeralds, some gold, some iron nuggets. And I went to go check for a buried treasure map, but this one just didn't have one at all. I thought that was pretty weird, that's something i never seen before. So it looks like we weren't going to be able to go on a buried treasure hunt. But anyway, that wraps it up for our first day and we're on to our first night. So I only really did three things that night. We explored the ocean, I found a village, I explored that too, and there's also a small island of enemies, so I tried to conquer it. I honestly can't even tell you what was going on with that. There was things freezing up and random shots going out of nowhere. It just really made no sense. And with that, we're on to day one, which is kind of weird while I'm following what that three screen says and it starts at zero. But anyway, I headed back to that one village because I saw this area behind it that I really quite liked. So I pretty much just spent most of the day prepping the area. I also ate some suspicious stew, which was definitely pretty risky. This if it was poison, that would have taken us down a lot. And I wrapped up the day by chopping down a few villagers and trapping some trees. Oh wait, no other way around. And so I spent this entire night mining down underground. Didn't get anything too crazy, but it was time to go back up. So I headed back over to the spruce trees to chop down some more. And I also thought this was super cool. So see the three furnaces in front of me? Well watch this when I go up to them. And the day is already almost over since we spent all of it collecting the logs. And the reason why we're doing that is we're actually going to build up a protective wall. So I started to lay down some of the foundation and framework for it. But we can't do too much before we have to go back down into the mines. And night two in the mines we got some more iron and redstone. And even some lapis. And going up to the surface for day three we had a few enemies. It wasn't a big deal except for I dumbly got hit by one of the spiders. And now we're down to only two and a half hearts. And since it would be pretty dumb to keep running around with only two and a half hearts, I decided to make a gold apple, some of the gold we found, and some we mined. And we spent the rest of the day trying to build up the wall, but it got dark too early and it wasn't completed, so we headed back down to the mine, hopefully for a final time. And also so we wouldn't have to build a new pillar each time, I finally decided to make a staircase down. And tonight was a pretty good night, because while taking away the iron, I spotted these sneaky little diamonds. there was only two diamonds though and now it was daytime so I went back up to work on the wall 
and I found this villager who wandered over, so I trapped him in the base, and we didn't get too much done on the wall, so it was back to mining, then back out again, and back to the wall. And since we actually got most of the wall up, I decided to light up the area inside, and try to stay up out on the surface tonight. Uh, so never mind, I'm going back in the mine. This is fine, this is fine. Okay, so at this point I decided that it'd be okay to lay in a bed which will keep phantoms from spawning, but I'm still definitely not allowed to sleep through the night. And now that it was safe outside again, I built up as much of the wall as I could, but we ran out of logs, so my idea was to build up a little tree farm at the house by growing one of the really tall Taiga trees. And this little system actually worked super well. And with these final few fences, the entire area will be sealed off. What is that? Dude, get out of here! Oh no, he's trying to break in. Okay, there we go, we're safe. But I did decide to let the guy in, and that means that we now have two villagers, which just worked out really nicely. So before it got dark, I made sure to make a bed for the phantoms, because we were going to spend this night up on the surface, building as much of the wall as we could. But as day came around, we had to leave our now safe base, and that's because I had a pretty important mission. We had to find some red and brown mushrooms, because if we got both those, we could start healing up with some suspicious stew. So we pretty much had to go on this big adventure in hopes to find some mushrooms. I started by going in the ocean and scanning the shore, since it was a lot safer, but I wasn't seeing anything, so we had to go into the woods. So now things were starting to feel hopeless. We only had a few minutes until night, and I couldn't find anything, but that's when I spotted a dark oak forest. So the good news is we were able to get our mushrooms, but the bad news is it started raining, it was getting dark, and we didn't have any ocean nearby. And I spent the rest of the daylight scurrying around trying to find our ocean. But it was hopeless, I felt blinded by the rain, enemies were already spawning, and night was just around the corner. And with only 4 hearts and the lack of visibility, it would be pretty dumb to keep running around at night. So I had to do the lame thing of digging down and making a little shelter. And to make things even worse, our tools were all super low, we didn't have any wood to make any new ones, and we were really just trapped down here. And the other thing is, even when it turns day, all these enemies will still be there. So I was really just confused on what to do. But I knew we couldn't just hide down here until the rain stopped. So I made a break for it and I just ran. But it turns out I was really unprepared for this trip. As I'd even bring enough food and we were already starving. So I had to grab some chicken and just keep on running. Things did get better though. We found the ocean, the rain stopped, and we finally made it back to our house. And to make sure we would never have to go for more mushrooms, I made this little shade thing so we could grow them inside our base. Night was here once again, but with our walls at 3 blocks high, it was pretty safe. So I started working on a sugarcane farm, because there was something we were going to need a lot of paper for. And along with the sugarcane farm, we got another little field going. And to wrap up that eventful day, I did the never-ending chore of building this wall. And really the only eventful thing for day 9 is we purchased some red sand. Oh yeah, and this too. Man, those guys are really the worst, but at least on day 10, we finally finished the wall. Well, we still had to put lanterns on the outside, but we pretty much finished the wall. And now that our wall was looking really good, I wanted to work on more farms, so we made a little fenced area, we had three little spots, because we were going to go collect some sheep, some cows, and some chickens. 
And while waiting for the day to collect our animals, I just expanded our sugarcane farm and our wheat farm, and also just collected some bones. So collecting the animals went pretty smoothly, except for when I went to go collect the cows. I was leading them over to the base when I look behind me, and I find out we actually have another follower. And I was surprised to learn that the rain that just started was actually a thunderstorm. There was lightning striking everywhere, things were lighting on fire. I was pretty sure part of my base was going to catch on fire, but the only real bad thing that happened is we lost the brown sheep. So what I'm doing now is setting up an actual storage system. So I worked on getting everything all sorted and stored, and the next morning something absolutely crazy happened. I just don't understand how I didn't hit the villager. But anyway, I cleared up this big space because I had another project that I wanted to work on. And so that project is actually to build a big old house, because I pretty much just wanted a place to hide when the phantoms were attacking or it was raining outside. So during the day I worked on the house and at night I tended to the farms. I also went to one of my villagers to try to get Fortune 3 to put that on our pickaxe, but we got something a bit too tasty to pass up. So day 13 we finally really finished up the wall, did some random stuff, and built a little place for our villagers to stay. Wait, never mind, day 14 is when we actually finished the wall. We also worked on our house, and went mining for a little to get some iron. And day 15 was just another day of working on the farms, collecting random stuff, and making little improvements. But on night 17 we finally changed the flow of things. I got a diamond pickaxe, we went down to go get some obsidian, and we got prepared to go to the nether. And all I'm thinking about is how much I've already done, and how much I don't want to lose it. Man, these shaders made it so hard to see, I was terrified. And I was just slowly going through and getting all the ender pearls I needed from the warped biome when I spotted this. But man, this thing just looked menacing. I saw Blaze and Weather Skeleton standing at the top. It's in the middle of this giant lava ocean. I just didn't know how I was gonna get there. But I mean, I guess I could just make a giant staircase all the way there. So I carefully worked my way into the fortress. We went past some Weather Skeletons, a Blaze, and I made it to a Blaze spawner without too much trouble. And once we were there, there were so many blaze just everywhere that I needed to slowly contain them. And as we took too much damage, I would take some time to heal up, and then I would go back in and try to get some more blaze rods. And this all definitely took a while, but I got all the blaze rods I needed. I went back and got a few more pearls, so we had all the pearls we needed. And it was just time to get back to the portal and get out of here. And it was really good to be back. I started to work on some random projects, so I got a brewing stand to try to collect some spider eyes to make some weakness potions for curing the villagers. I also made an enchantment table and tried to start collecting some of the bookshelves. And whenever I got the chance in between the little projects, I went back to working on the house, and we were starting work on building up the second story walls. So I pretty much just spent the days working on the house. But as night came around, I didn't want to get shot off by any skeletons, so I headed back into our main fortress, and one of the things I was doing is trying to get some good villager trades. So after a whole night of placing and breaking lecterns, we finally got our fortune. It was only fortune 2, but it was cheap enough that I thought it was worth it, so I decided to lock in the trades of that guy, and as day came around, we went back to working on the house. And the second story walls were coming along really well. And one of the things we needed for our villagers was actually a zombie to zombieify him so then we could cure him. So I got a guy to come in from the outside, it was a little tricky, but I got him locked in. And on that same night I went out before the sun rose to go fight a few more spiders to hopefully get a spider eye. And finally, we got our spider eye. So at this point we pretty much had all the ingredients we needed to heal up a villager. 
but those villager things are gonna have to wait for the night. So since it was day, I decided to collect some wool and actually start work on a roof. I've never done this before, but I decided to do a wool roof, and so far I'm really liking the way it's turning out. And on our 25th night, our enchantment table is fully ready to go. So I decided to enchant our pickaxe and our boots and see what we could get. With our pickaxe, we got efficiency 4, and we got some depth starter on our boots. And with the pickaxe, I also put some fortune on there and decided to go on a quick mining trip. So after we were done mining, I decided that I've said I decided way too many times. So I used the cobblestone we just mined up to start work on our floor, but I finally had enough of this one mine that was hiding down underneath. There's all these enemies in it always making noise, and I knew I had to deal with it before we filled in the floor. And one of the funny things is that the village in our base spawned a cat, and he ran into the house and got trapped by the water, so now we just have this random little cat running around the house. I was starting to feel really happy with the house too. Once we get in the second story floor, we'll have an actual sealed house, and it'll finally feel like a real home. And you know, I was just so excited to get this house done, I started placing in planks at just turbo speed faster than ever, until I ran out of energy and planks, and we had to go get more. And while heading back outside, I caught a freak lurking in the base. As soon as he saw me, he scattered, but it was pretty strange. And there's that floor looking all snazzy. Now it's time to get back to work on the roof. So one thing I was thinking about with this is whether I wanted to seal off the roof here, or whether I wanted to keep going up with it. And I came up with a little idea on what to do, but first we had a lot of work to do on building up this roof. And it looks like we're not even safe during the day, as as we construct more of this roof, we're just making more shade for the enemies to hide under. But it doesn't matter much, our house is looking really good. So I finally grabbed our weakness potions and kidnapped- no, dragged- no. Yeah, I guess there's no easy way to put this, we're pretty much gonna drag a villager underground and have him get beat up by a zombie. So for that I just need to go underground and find the zombie, it should be simple enough. Right? So here's pretty much my brain during all this. I hop down, look for the zombie, I'm thinking he should be right here. I get hit by something that makes no sense, so I tower up just to be safe. I keep looking around and this guy just isn't anywhere, I'm thinking maybe he's further down here. That would make sense when he hits me again. So at this point I realize it has to be some kind of glitch or something. I re-log, and there he is. For some reason, the zombie is invisible. It's pretty weird, but it's not the only time we're gonna see this. So my whole system for this wasn't very refined yet, and it was pretty tricky to get these guys where I wanted them to. But it wasn't totally awful and we got everything to work out. So we finally got our first villager curing, and by the way this is our mending guy, so hopefully we can get mending for just one emerald now which would be super awesome. What I gotta do now is get this zombie in a better spot, because right now this whole system is pretty messed up. And with everything getting nicely wrapped up we could go on and quickly- oh never mind. Oh yeah that's looking pretty awesome. And I'm going to take that mending book and put it on our pickaxe so we now have mending, fortune, and efficiency. It's looking pretty good. So that one thing I mentioned about the house earlier, this is what I was talking about. We're going to build up a platform and build up a tower on top of this, so we could actually have a big lookout tower all the way up on top of our house. And just in time, we had our roof all built up right as things started to get soggy. And I headed inside and it was pretty nice, although on the outside it was getting a little crazy. But I wasn't going to let the rain keep us in all day, so I headed up to the roof and started working on the towers. And I realized we are going to need some more glass for the windows, so I had to go back over to our little sandy spot, dig up some sand, and smelt it up. And I went on a quick little side quest to try to get some fish to feed our cat, but when I went to go find the cat, I couldn't find him anywhere. So I gave up and went back to working on the house. The good news is, the rain finally stopped. And the tower was coming along really well. I made it a bit more narrow towards the top and I added some more wool roof where it slimmed down. But the thing was looking really nice. All I needed to do was finish up the top platform, add in the wool roof. And for that I just needed to collect a little bit more wool and a few more logs. 
yeah, I don't know what the heck those noises were. But on day 33, we had the tower finished, so I went up to the top, turned up my render distance, and just enjoyed the view. So back down on the ground, I'm looking for that little cat. I could pretty much hear him everywhere, but I had no clue where he was. But I finally remembered that he got trapped in this weird little water spot, so I decided to see if he was invisible too. And he was. It was a little frustrating, but at least we found him. I just needed to catch a few more fish so we could hopefully tame him. So on the morning of day 34, I went around getting some cinematic shots of the entire base, and I really like the way it's all looking. So next I tried to work on the interior of the house a little bit. I thought about going pretty crazy with it, but I decided I would stick with something that's more functional. So we got some furnaces in there, and I tried working on a storage system, and it actually took days until we finally got a design I like. Because I tried a nice little design, I tried putting it in the floor, and then I finally liked just two giant rows covering the entire wall. And now it's time to get to work on one of our biggest projects. For this we're going to need a whole bunch of stone, so I headed down to the mine, and along the way we got quite a few diamonds, which was really nice with our new fortune pickaxe. And I spent quite a while down there, but we did run out of pocket space pretty quickly, and since I needed all the cobblestone, we had to head up, which means that it's time to get to work on the big project. So you could try to guess what this is as we build it. We're going to need quite a few dispensers and observers, and we're also going to need to go tower up super high into the sky. So it's probably not very obvious yet. But anyway, I needed to jump down to grab some water buckets because we're going to be building a giant collection tray. And so here it is, pretty much finished. So what this actually is, is a mob farm, and the biggest reason we need it is to start collecting some levels. So here comes some action. I noticed there is some misplaced water in the system, and the only way to get in there is to go through all the mobs. But even with all the enemies out of here, there was still a lot of work to be done. Something pretty bad happened to the water and it got all mixed up, and I pretty much had to redo the entire collection tray. But now that that was fixed, things were finally going and it actually seemed like it was working pretty good. But there were still some improvements to make. I made the shade thing at the top a little bit bigger, and I also AFK'd at a higher distance because there was actually some mobs spawning in at ground level. But after fixing all those things up, this mob farm was working so well. And one thing that was also really nice about the farm is we are getting a whole bunch of bones and gunpowder and all that type of stuff that we could use for other things. So anyway, I went to go work with the villagers some more, and things got a little bit frustrating. Well, I'm dumb, but at least we could go get another. Oh my god, seriously? Well, here he is, the new guy with his door and everything. All we gotta do is get him in here without completely dying. So I trapped him in a boat and threw one of our potions of weakness, so that way he wouldn't be able to punch us while we move him around with the boat, and we got him down back into the basement. And right here, I honestly don't even know what I'm doing. I at least thought the zombie stole weakness, but he didn't, and he just started beating us up. And the reason I went into my pockets is I was trying to get a boat out, but I couldn't find any, so we had to resort to plan B. So now we're just trapped back here trying to get the zombie back into a boat. It's pretty much just a train wreck at this point. And at half health, I finally got everything all fixed up. All we needed now was the weakness potions and the golden apples. And when I went back to go get the zombie filter, we actually got hit again, and we're down to only four hearts. But that wasn't going to stop us, so I munched on some suspicious... Suspicious... 
some suspicious stew, and we got back to work on curing up another villager. And with the help of some lecterns and a lot of time, we got respiration 3, which definitely ended up being really useless. And back up on the surface, I heard one of our villagers get hurt, so I just obliterated every zombie I saw. And on the topic of obliterating... And I headed back up to our mob farm because after thinking about it, there's no reason why we really need these villager trades, because we're only ever going to need one piece of gear. So I decided the best thing to do would be just to enchant a whole bunch of stuff and try to combine it in the best way possible. So that's pretty much all I did for quite a few days, but we were actually getting some super good enchantments. And right at night 49, we were pretty much finished. So I just peacefully watched the sun rise on day 50. Man, those guys are just evil. So I combined as much of the gear as I could, but I had to go back up and bring Anvil with me so we could combine the rest. But we did actually end up needing the villagers, because I pretty much had the best gear I could get, there was just a few more things I needed, as some of the gear didn't have on breaking, and it would be too much work to try to get all those with just the enchantment table, so I thought the best way would be to go get this villager. And it definitely took quite a while, but we ended up getting our unbreaking 3. And after buying as many unbreaking and mending books as I could, I went back up to the farm and enchanted all of our gear with mending and unbreaking. And now all of our gear was pretty much as good as it gets. There was only two more things we needed, one of them was just to get protection 4 and everything, but I wanted to wait for that one, and instead I wanted to upgrade everything with netherite. And while just making our staircase down to Y level 15, I already found some ancient debris. So I scooped that guy up, but to find the rest, we're gonna need to get a bit crazier. And that right there shows how I could slowly build up to a pretty dangerous situation. Each of those explosions was taking down our health, and right when we were at our lowest, we got hit by fire. If it wasn't for our armor, that definitely could have been really bad. But at that point, I just got out of there and upgraded all of our tools with what we had. But that doesn't mean we're going to hide away forever. I had to go on a big adventure back to another fortress, because we forgot one of the key ingredients. So I actually found a brand new nether fortress, and I slowly worked my way in. So there they are, the three nether wart. There's only one more thing I needed and that's some soul sand to grow it on, but the only spot I could find was this crazy looking soul sand island. And just at the start of our journey we were already met with a ghast, so I started firing at him, but he just despawned, and then another one spawned in, so I started firing at him, I got him, and we worked over to the island. And now we are actually above the island, all I needed was some way to get down. Man, I hate watching that part, I messed so many things up. But I did manage to clear up the island, and we were able to get some of our soul sand. And with that all wrapped up, I towered up, took our bridge back, and we were safe back in the overworld. And I cleared up a little space, plopped down our soul sand, and planted our three little nether wart. And now it's time to start on a brand new mission. Because when we were doing that netherite mining, one thing I really needed was some healing potions, so we could quickly heal up. And for that potion, we're gonna need some watermelon. So I either need to find a jungle or a savanna, and in that savanna, we need to find a savanna village. And to my absolute surprise, we found a jungle within the first like five minutes of searching. So I grabbed everything we could from the jungle. We got saplings and bamboo and all of that type of stuff, but it was getting dark before I could manage to find any melons. And I ended up just making a little hidey tower after searching all the shores I could and just waited for daytime. And as day came around, I was still too afraid to go into the jungle, so I just went around the edge, and we found some easy-to-get melons, and we were out of there. 
And also on my way back, I used my brand new silk touch pickaxe to pick up some coral blocks. But now we're home, so let's get these melons planted. And after not too much time at all, we got our first melon. So I made some glistening melons, and now all we needed was the nether wart. But that was taking forever, so I decided I would collect some oxide daisies. And it was still taking so long, I made an entire oxide daisy farm. But they still weren't grown, so I collected some obsidian, I made an ender chest, and I even sorted the entire thing. But here they are, still not fully grown, so I just pretty much worked on farms until finally one of them grew. And that meant we were finally able to get some super awesome healing potions. And with those healing potions, we were able to somewhat peacefully go collect some more ancient debris. And with that, we were able to get some new pants, some new boots, a new sword, a new shovel, and a new iron golem. What? Uh, so anyway, I got another villager, so we could get a glowstone trade to start turbo producing some potions, because we're going to need it for something pretty big. And so here's what I have so far, and what we're actually going to be doing is finally fighting the dragon. We could have done this quite a bit earlier, but I wanted to get all the super gear going into it. Don't really need it, but it should be kind of fun. And so it's nighttime right now, and I was just waiting for it to turn day, so we could start our adventure. So I healed up everything, we got everything we needed, and it was time to go. And it was a decent little adventure through mountains and spruce forest, but overall the portal wasn't too far away. And with a quick little dig down, we were in. And I traveled through quite a bit of the stronghold itself when I started to hear some silverfish. And they were in a pretty strange spot, so I decided to dig into the walls when something pretty crazy happened. That could have gone a lot worse. So I finally found a spot to dig up that wasn't lava filled, and we made our way up just to get shot by this guy. And there's something eerily strange about this world and my no damage speedrun, with that skeleton in the same spot and the spot we poked out too, which is a little weird. Okay, but who cares? There's no reason to wait, so it's just time to go in. And it's been forever since I spawned on one of these things off the island, so I just made a little dirt bridge over, worked my way up, and there he is. That's absolutely awesome. I think we got hit once by the dragon breath, but other than that, it went really smooth. But the dragon fight was only a small part of this adventure. I also had everything we needed to go find the end city. And so I got my way up to the gateway, and one thing is the shader pack made the end look so good, but for some reason this portal here looked kinda dumb. But here we go. Wait, why is it raining? <laughs> why are we on this little plant too? So once we were there, I cheated to... I mean use tactical render distance to try to find some end cities. And there one is, and I was so happy to see it because sometimes these end cities actually take hours to find. So I sweat and shook my way over, holding down shift the entire time, throwing my ender pearls and bridging to the end city. And it was quite a bit further than I expected, but it wasn't terrible, and we're actually finally here. And would you believe it, there's another end city to go explore after. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, my first encounter with the shulkers went pretty well, but I decided to head up to the boat before we explore the tower. And yes! Sorry, I got a little excited. I just can't believe we actually have Elytra on this world. And we have a shulker box too. This is just so awesome. And the final thing I grabbed was the dragon head, and we were finally able to test our Elytra. I just, I just still can't believe this. And I picked up everything from the other boat too, and it was time to go into these towers and try to get as many shulker shells as we can. Now would you look at that, bonus portal. And I'm really proud of what we were able to get done in the end, but it's time to end it by jumping back through this portal. And so here we are, I immediately took off into the sky, and it's just so crazy seeing our base from this perspective. I just took a little flight around enjoying the Lytra, but they started to run out so we needed to head back to the base and give them a good upgrade with some unbreaking and some mending. And I healed them up and went on a super far adventure, way out into the beyond. And I found a desert, so I collected some cactus and a savanna too, so I collected some acacia saplings. And I ended up at this crazy place, so I figured I would take out one of the banner guys and go actually fight a raid. But let's just say things ended up weird. And so right here I leave to go find a village thinking that I have bad omen, but all I actually got was the voluntary exile, because since it was actually the flame that killed the pillager, I never actually got bad omen. And here's the village I end up finding when I look up to the corner and see that I don't have bad omen, and I was really confused, I thought maybe it ran out, but it just turns out we never even got it in the first place. And with that realization, I instead went to a swamp to get some slime, just in case we ever need it in the future. After that I try to find another pillager outpost, I searched for days and I just couldn't find any, so I slowly worked my way back home. And after such a long adventure, my lights were getting low and I needed to find some XP. And on our way back, I came across the ocean monument, so I figured it would be a good time to try to take out our second boss. continue exploring but I didn't have any logs so I placed on my ender chest to simply get some logs out when I realized there's no way for me to pick this back up so I figured the only way to get this back is to go kill the two others. Yeah forget it this ender chest isn't that important. But even just running away like a coward proved to be pretty difficult. I'm also pretty sure the Elder Guardian had to be like one hit away from dying. It was just too risky to continue though. I did try to break the Ender Chest, but after thinking about it and doing the math, I think it took something like 20 minutes just to break it with mining fatigue. And I'm pretty sure the reason they were so strong is that armor doesn't even do anything to Guardian Beams. I'm gonna go look that up. Okay, so armor does reduce damage from the beam, but not as much as it reduces other damages, so it's pretty much the beam is a bit OP. Ah yes, we're back home. I used the slime we got to make a better clock for our mob farm, and then I actually made a smite sword to start work on something else. Because so far we took down the ender dragon, we just got a guardian, and so it makes sense that we just have to take down the wither. And while collecting the skulls, I had to do something pretty lame, and I had to shut off the shaders, because I just honestly could not see a single thing with them on. The entire nether fortress and wither skeletons and everything were just pitch black, it was just impossible to see what was going on. So here it is with no shaders, and things do look pretty strange. 
And so what I'm doing right now is just trying to collect those wither skeletons. So I'll take out every one I see on the fortress, and then what I do is I just fly off a decent distance. So it despawns everything on the fortress, and when I come back it spawns in a brand new set of enemies. And so I can just keep going back and forth getting new wither skeletons each time. And so there was a decent amount of trouble doing all this. The bullies were pretty annoying and at some point I randomly hit a pigman, so we had all those guys coming after me. But our first skull was finally obtained. So with that first one done, I went back to the overworld to get some fire resistance potions, so the bullies wouldn't be a problem anymore, and that really helped out a lot. And that skull right there was actually just from my second skeleton coming back, and I was just thrilled. But our third skull did take quite a while, but I just kept at it, and finally we had all three skulls. And we just made it past day 75, and at this point I'm feeling a little bit stressed for time. But anyway, we got our three skulls set up to fight on day 99. And yeah, I decided to do it on day 99 instead of 100, so we can make sure that we did it within the 100 days. And what I did next is spend a lot of time trying to get a protection 4 guy, so we could totally max out our gear. I ended up getting protection 3, but it actually works out fine, because if we combine that with our gear, we still get protection 4. And with that final enchantment, our gear literally can't be any better. So that's super awesome. I want to go get some more netherite so we could finish up some of our tools. And I used all the TNT we got from exploring desert temples to blow up this area, and we didn't get a single ancient debris. And I stopped there since I didn't have any wool on me, and I instead went to go looking for some ghast. And that's because we needed regeneration to add to our crazy pile of wither fighting potions. So yeah, we're going all in on this wither fight, because we're actually going to be fighting him for real. We're not going to be sticking him in bedrock or fighting him underground, we're actually going to spawn him up on the surface and fight him for real. And so we wrapped up our creative potions, we had a potion of leaping and swiftness and healing and regeneration and just all that stuff. So all I did after that was collect some netherite for our sword and our chest plate, and we're fully ready to go. And so that's everything set up for the actual fight, but once it's all over, I want to have a full beacon ready to go. And so that means we need to collect 1,476 of just total diamonds, iron, gold, and emeralds. I went back up to the surface after a few days, and things seemed to be going pretty well. But for real, after an hour of mining, I was already pretty bored of it, and we weren't really that close, so I had to turn to murder. <laughs> yes, your arm will be mine. So I pretty much started doing anything I could to get money at this point. I was trading with villagers, taking out iron golems, and I also tried to go mining again, but I kind of just gave up after I hit some gravel. <laughs> You can't get me on top of my melons. And we need 164 of these blocks, and so far we have 23 to 10, 30, 64 plus 19 is 70, 80, 83 I think. It was actually 86. But anyway, that's not 164, so we need to collect some more. And I was trying to come up with some new strategies, and one of them that I tried that seemed to work pretty good was going to Bastions and just stealing all the gold they have. So the first layer of 81 blocks was done, and the second layer was about halfway through, but each of these layers got exponentially more easy, so we're actually doing pretty good. Oh my god, I forgot about this, this is actually the coolest thing ever. So see this guy right here? Full diamond skeleton in the nether. So if you didn't know, there's a really rare chance, I've never seen one of these in the nether, but there's a rare chance on like a full moon and the certain chunks and all this stuff, you'd get a full diamond zombie or skeleton. So this is so rare, and it's just absolutely amazing. And you guys just aren't going to believe me at this point, but I didn't like the nether very much anymore, so I went to go search for some ocean monuments, and we found a pink sheep. So both those back to back is just unreal, and it gave me the idea to make a bit of a trophy room where we could put some of the stuff we got in along our adventures into the second story of our building. 
but I got back to work on our beacon. I was going mining, trading with villagers, getting all the iron golems, and slowly adding to it until finally we had the beacon ready to go. But as soon as I got it up, I actually tore it all down because I wanted to do a cooler design. And here we go on day 90, we're looking pretty stylish. So we really only do have 10 days left. So I decided to spend that time trying to find a pilcher outpost to complete our lost mission of taking down a raid. But on night 91, I got a little bit distracted. I wanted to take out a stray in case we ever wanted to do the All Monsters Hunted achievement. And then that led to me wanting to get the achievement Sniper Duel. And that outpost was once again a pain to find. My elytra were getting low, and so I got really desperate for some XP. Well, at least not super, super desperate. And at this point, I was seriously thinking about giving up. I was slowly heading home, but finally, there it was. I've waited a long time to get you, little buddy. Just get over here. Oh, dang. We actually got it. This is starting to get pretty terrifying now. And I found our village. This is really happening. So I jumped in. I secured one of the villagers just to make sure we would have someone who was safe. And it was time to fight. Wave 1 was easy peasy and we were on to wave 2. No, first I killed a horse and now they killed Frederick. Wave 2 was a tragic wave. On to wave 3. Oh no, a Ravager. If only there's a giant creature made of iron to save me. Roar! Back off, Ravager. On wave 4, things were getting a bit spooky as day turned to night. Wrong. Get out of here. Wave 5. This is going to be our first encounter with the Evoker. Wave 6 and things were crazy, there were still phantoms left behind, and there's a crazy amount of pillagers. thought and was hoping that that was the final wave, but it turns out we have wave 7 still.
and I could not be happier. We survived, at least one of the villagers survived, and we had four totems of undying. And on day 94, I was chilling and going fishing to get some fish to feed our cat. And since we sold a tiny bit of time, I tried to do one more project and collect some bees for a bee farm, but it really wasn't worth it, so I instead got prepared to fight the wither, but I did try a little bit more to get the bee farm in. But after officially giving up on the bee farm, the final thing I wanted to do was improve the base a little bit, and so that's what I did right before day 98. I can't believe it, here we are. I packed up everything and headed away from base, and I was all ready to spawn this guy. The sun of day 98 was setting, and as soon as day 99 started, we we're gonna place down our soul sand and wither skeleton skulls. Wait. No! Oh, I was so prepared. I showed up early, and now we're fumbling back in the rain because I forgot the actual wither. Oh no, we don't have any time to mess up anymore. We just have to spawn this guy and fight. No way, no way. We really did it. A hundred days on super ultra hardcore Minecraft. And with this beacon nearby and the totem of undying in our hands, no longer do we have to worry. We really accomplished a lot in these hundred days. We built awesome structures like our wall and house and our mob farm. We destroyed some pretty crazy things like the dragon, the guardian, all those wither skeletons and the wither, and even the entire raid. 
We also went on some pretty awesome explorations and explored bastions and fortresses and found some awesome guys in diamond armor and pink sheep. I couldn't be more proud of what we got done. So thank you for going on this journey with me and thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. See you in the next video.